Max Barr, what do we got on relevant injuries? Ken Pomlines, Bart Torvik, all that good stuff, tip off, all the things that people want to know off the top. Yeah, so naturally, naturally, we look at the lines first. I don't think that the computers have this line right, but um, right now we're showing a Mississippi State about a four-point favorite at home. Um, now, this is a bounce back for both teams. I mean, obviously, Mississippi State has uh, dropped three in a row. South Carolina, just the big one uh, on Wednesday. So both teams trying to end the regular season on the right foot. Uh, don't see a, a motivational edge either either side there. Um, and then injury wise, I believe we are fully healthy now that Miles Studi is it was back in action uh, for the Gamecocks in Mississippi State. I believe is at is at full health as well. Um, so we should be in for a physical one. Should be in for what what could be one of the more important games of the weekend, especially with where. Mississippi State currently seeds in the SEC tournament. Uh, Blake, I know you posted the standings, the current standings uh, last night. Mississippi State's just kind of in a log jam right there. They are, but uh, there's also something that I didn't realize until we literally hit the record button. Um, the bracketologists don't seem to be very high on this Mississippi State team now mm. after their mm. loss to Texas A&M. And uh, if you look at ESPN's projection, um, Mr. Joe Lenardi, you can also look elsewhere because I've seen some other brackets now that I've uh, been looking at this the past two minutes um, that also have Mississippi State in the same range. They would be this six team, the last six team into the field. So mm. we're talking like one spot away from last four in territory. Um, and so... Yeah, so this is a pretty important game. I, I said the last time around, I think they're in even if they lose. But I said that also, I think, with the caveat that they have to, they probably have to win an SEC tournament game. Like, I don't think they can just lose out. And also included in that is an SEC tournament loss in the first game. So, because the likelihood of them playing, I mean, I guess the way the bracket falls right now, they're going to be playing... In the first round of the SEC tournament, they're going to be playing a team that is likely not going to make the NCAA tournament because it's going to be A&M, LSU, Ole Miss most likely. I guess maybe it could be Georgia or Arkansas, but those teams also apply to that. So must win, perhaps, for the Bulldogs here uh, at home against the Gamecocks. And, yeah, like you mentioned, Max, there's a lot of interesting storylines for this one just from a, a style of play standpoint um, and that kind of thing. Of course, these were the – Two teams that uh, you don't always get this every year, but it's always interesting to have it fall on the schedule this way where two teams open up conference play and they finish conference play against each other. So you can really get an idea of where teams have come from uh, since the last time they played on January the 6th, which, of course, Mississippi State lost that one um, at South Carolina 68-62. Yeah, Bracket Matrix has Mississippi State as the – the last nine seed is of Friday morning. There's a little bit of a delay on those from time to time. But th these are two teams, they're going to play slower tempos. At South Carolina, 347 on offense, State 238 in terms of possession link. Carolina will try to grind you, of course, down a little bit on that end too. Well, Mississippi State possessions against in terms of getting off shots a faster defensive tempo, if that makes sense, than than I would have thought. Um, 18th in adjusted defensive efficiency. So that that's kind of interesting. Um, we've talked about Mississippi State's troubles with, with foul shooting this year. We've talked about South Carolina's propensity to be able to lock down three point shooters and limit attempts. I mean, but these are these are not teams where I see like this contrast in styles and something that just jumps off the page and says, hey, this really favors one team or another. Max, am I missing something here? No, I think you're I think you're right on. This is this is pretty much looking in the mirror when when the yeah. teams are playing each other. Um, but we have to remember also that first game was way back January 6th, right? This was only Tolu Smith's second game, second appearance of the year. He had just 
came back the the first the last game of the non conference, and then this was his second game. He plays twenty minutes, fouls out. Uh, he was just getting started. Cam Matthews also fouls out in this game, but on the flip, also for South Carolina, Kyle Murray Boyles was just getting back into the swing of things off his yeah. his mono that he had to start the year. He only played seventeen minutes. So you have this, this kind of weird dynamic where in the first game, both of the team's probably most powerful, you know, presence in the low post now were just starting to get the rust off the wheels in that first matchup. So it's tough to look back on that and kind of try to draw a conclusion. I think we're going to see much different teams this time around. Yeah, I think it just, again, speaks to what we've seen from – I know they won the game last time, but just kind of what this team has become. You mentioned kind of um, got different guys who have kind of become breakout players since then. And, um, you know, I mean, too, it's something to think think about here is like South Carolina has won some really big road games recently. And this is one where they're going to go in and play a Mississippi State team who's also won some big home games this year, as we know. And really, when you look at it for Mississippi State, I think that's what we got to remember. I mean, they're a, you know, a Reed Shepard runner away from what taking that thing to to overtime and maybe having a chance to beat Kentucky. You know, they beat Ole Miss, they beat Arkansas, they beat Georgia, they beat Auburn, they beat Vanderbilt, they beat Tennessee. Um, you know, Alabama wins there by eight a week after that South Carolina game again, where it felt like Mississippi State had not kind of hit their stride yet. And Kentucky wins on a buzzer beater. So other than that, I mean, they've been really good at home. And I know the Southern game happened, but that was forever ago now. Um, so yeah, I mean, this has been a hard team to, to beat there. And meanwhile, you know, South Carolina has been a team that at times I think has played as well as anybody on the road outside of just those two, you know, games against Alabama and Auburn. So matchup wise, I mean, look, this is just, these are two teams that, you know, we always kind of laugh. It was, you know, you don't expect probably a high scoring game here. Um, this is going to be one that's possession by possession is going to feel like a grind for both teams i think the the free throw shooting aspect of this is going to be interesting um because neither team has really needed that a whole lot this season but i think with the physicality that they they play with you could see more fouls in a game like this i had to look back at what happened the last time but um yeah i just i don't think there's like just this and maybe it goes back to what max said earlier there's just this decided advantage one way or the other because i think these two teams are not maybe similar in terms of what they've accomplished, but they're similar, I think, in terms of how they want to play to be successful and who's going to win out here in terms of the strengths. So Let's cut to the chase. I think we usually try to offer more analysis than we have here. There's just not much that, that sticks out. I mean, they're, they're two teams that will play slow. They're going to be physical. They're not going to light the world on fire and score 100 points. They can grind you defensively. Mississippi State's probably got a better interior presence with Matthews and and with Tolu Smith. State's got the best outside shooter in the game in in Josh Hubbard. South Carolina, boy, the discipline, though. I mean, the the, the guard play, the the finding a way, the the winning in a lot of spots, it's something to consider. Look, if we are picking this – Let's say a week from now they're playing this game in Nashville on neutral floor and, and there's nothing sticking out like one team's really tired or got an injury. I'm probably taking South Carolina to win a close one on a neutral floor. But we've talked about spots all year. We've talked about venue. T- to me, the the smart pick is is saying I'll take the home team in a closely matched game and the, the team that's got more to play for because South Carolina's getting in the NCAA tournament. I think Mississippi State is too, but you don't want to mess around and, and find out the hard way. Because of the spot, I'm going to take Mississippi State here. Max? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Um, the main thing that I'm that I'm drawing my conclusion from, honestly, because we saw we saw this South Carolina team really start to force some turnovers there against against Florida. That's kind of uncharacteristic of what their numbers would suggest. The numbers say that this is a South Carolina defense that never forces turnovers dead last in the SEC, but they can with, with Zachary Davis and some of these Murray Boyles being a little bit more lengthy than and athletic defensively than a, a Stephen Clark or a Josh Gray or something like that. And the South Carolina defense, I feel like is, 
we've been kind of saying it all all year, but they're better than what their numbers show. Uh, I feel like because they they don't get a ton of blocks, they don't get a ton of steals, so it doesn't look flashy, but they don't get you nothing easy. Um, but the main the main thing that's kind of tilting me the other way is the fact that Colin Murray Boyles is going to have Cam Matthews on him all game. And now, don't get me wrong. If you were in the live, you know how much I love Colin Murray Boyles. I love this kid. I think he's going to be a star. Um, but Cam Matthews is is my bully ball player of the year candidate from the midseason awards. I mean, this guy doesn't get much more physical than Cam Matthews. I think that the, the way that Mississippi State uh, can defend and switch – uh, I think this is going to be as low scoring of a game as we've seen. The, the Ken Palm has this projected at 64 possessions. That is just a snail's pace. Uh, so I'm going to do what I'm, I'm going to go with you, Chris. Also, I'll take the home team. Um, but with a pace this slow, man, I I wouldn't feel comfortable laying points on a favorite just with how yeah. few possessions there might be in this game. Hmm. What do you know? Two of the children picking against Father Lamont Paris once again. No surprise there. Um, I picked South Carolina last game. That didn't work out. Yeah, no well. surprise what you're about to do either. By the way, if we're gonna if we're gonna play that card. And now what, what am I gonna do, Nostradamus? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna pick South Carolina because you've been you've been backed into a corner. Hmm. Unless you're not, because I called you on it. Well, you sounded really sure before you, you know, started hesitating there. You, you seemed to know what I was going to do. Um, you know, listen, I, I think if you look at South Carolina here, they have played some of their best basketball against teams like this. And I think that there's a lot on the line for Mississippi State in this one. But I'm going to be honest with you. I have kind of gotten to the point with Mississippi State where I don't trust them as much as I, I used to. And I, I wonder how South Carolina plays coming off of, I, I think, what has to be considered a deflating loss to Tennessee because of what was at stake. And now maybe South Carolina's like, well, what do we really have at stake going into this? Other than NCAA tournament seeding, I don't think, you know, I just don't think they're in a position to move into a top four seed or anything like that anymore. Seems like, you know, the most likely scenario, five to, to seven, I would think. Um, so not a ton to play for. Mississippi State, meanwhile, as we said, has got everything to play for here uh, because they are moving in the wrong direction. Um, but as always, you know, I don't I don't like to to put the the bad mojo on on dad. So I'm not going to do that to him here. I'm going to pick South Carolina on the road because guess what? I picked South Carolina on the road in two recent big games that they played in, and they've managed to pull both of them off. And I think this is a very similar game in terms of the style and and that kind of thing. I mean, especially like to me, this is Texas A&M part two for South Carolina, although yep. it's just a matter of motivation at this point and knowing that you don't have as much to play for in this game as you did in the Tennessee game on Wednesday. And so how do they respond to that? If there is something we've said, they usually do a pretty good job of responding this year if they have a not-so-great performance, uh, even though, you know, yeah, they lost to LSU after the Auburn game. But, you know, again, those kind of things happen throughout the course of the season. Only time they've lost back-to-back -back games all season long. So, ah, eh, why not? I'll pick the quote-unquote upset here although like max said i just think that's a lot of points maybe yeah. in this scenario so give me the game we guys. have our, we have our fun here blake and i like to needle each other but i do think you guys bring up some good, i mean stylistically this is this is a south carolina type game and that's why i think it's hard to like i, I think you want the game 61 to 58 if you're carolina i think it's a lot yeah. more likely to happen in this scenario um, than, than it is some others. But anyway, uh, we'll be watching. We'll be talking about it afterwards. Best way to catch all that is to hit the subscribe button. If you like it, hit the like button. That helps us out here. Went over 15,000 people this week in terms of subscribers. Uh, thank you to all the, the loyal watchers and listeners who made that happen. For Max Barr and Blake Lovell, I'm Chris Lee. We're Southeastern 14 presented by Bet Online.